Attention all movie buffs. Today, we're delving into a timeless classic from 1937 that paved the way for future generations. It's not just a film, it's a journey through the glitz and glamour of Hollywood's heyday, complete with laughter, surprises, and tear-jerking moments. What makes this cinematic masterpiece stand out? Well, let's explore together. But before we dive into its lasting appeal, brace yourselves for a roller coaster ride of fascinating trivia about the movie. Stick around for the fun. This iconic film isn't just about fame and love. It's a reflection of the highs and lows of life under the spotlight. But why does it still captivate audiences today? What elements make it a timeless symbol of the silver screen? While we ponder that, here's a question for you. Do you have a special memory tied to this classic? Perhaps a scene that left a lasting impression? Share your stories and reflections with us in the comments below. So, get ready to take a stroll down memory lane and uncover why this cinematic gem continues to shine bright in the world of movies. Share your thoughts and let's keep the conversation going. Back in 1937, a certain film hit the screens and it wasn't just any film. This movie captured the hearts of many with its captivating story and unforgettable performances. It wasn't just a movie, it became a symbol of inspiration for aspiring talents everywhere. From the very beginning, it was clear that the story struck a chord with audiences. The tale of ambition, love, and the struggles of fame resonated deeply, leading to a ripple effect across popular culture. Soon, adaptations and spin-offs began to emerge, each adding its own twist to the timeless narrative. But it wasn't just about what happened on screen. This movie's influence extended far beyond the theaters. It sparked a cultural phenomenon, inspiring merchandise, and becoming a staple in the lives of its fans. Posters adorned walls and memorabilia became cherished possessions, solidifying the film's place in history. Even today, the impact of this film can still be felt. Its characters and storyline have become iconic, leaving a lasting impression on storytelling in the entertainment industry. The adaptations that followed serve as a reminder of the enduring power of this cinematic masterpiece. In the end, this movie isn't just a movie, it's a symbol of inspiration and a testament to the timeless allure of storytelling and its legacy continues to live on, inspiring new generations of talent and captivating audiences around the world. In the movie, Andy Devine played a notable role as Jingles P. Jones, riding a horse named Joker, which was originally offered to Burl Ives. Yuma, Arizona lacked a three-day waiting period for marriage licenses at the time, making it a popular spot for quick weddings, as Norman mentions. Carol Landis appeared alongside Cesar Romero in four films, including Dance Hall, A Gentleman at Heart, Orchestra Wives, and Wintertime. Las Vegas has since overtaken Yuma as the go-to destination for instant ceremonies. All these elements contribute to the colorful backdrop of the film. In the world of cinema, connections often span decades, weaving together stories that resonate across time. One such tale involves a memorable line spoken by a character to another, a moment that echoes through different retellings of the story. It's fascinating how these subtle connections endure, carrying the essence of the original narrative into new interpretations. Such is the case with a particular film where a poignant line uttered by one character has left a lasting impression, echoing in various forms over the years. These echoes, seen in different versions of the tale, underscore the timeless nature of the story, showing how it continues to captivate audiences generation after generation. In 1937, a famous movie brought together talented people who left a lasting impact in Hollywood. Janet Gaynor, who won an Academy Award for Best Actress when she was 22, showed her great skill in the main role. However, she was not as young as Jennifer Lawrence and Marley Matlin when they won. During that time, Edgar Kennedy, a funny actor, also made his mark in movies. His The Average Man series, although they didn't have much money to make them, stayed on Arco's schedule for an amazing 24 years. Surprisingly, they kept showing them even after he passed away until RKO closed in the late 50s. As life went on, Janet Gaynor became a mother at 33. Her only child, a son named Robin Gaynor Adrian, was born on July 6, 1940. His father was her second husband, Adrian. This story, with Janet Gaynor's awards and Edgar Kennedy's funny movies, shows how well stories were told back then and how life and art were connected. In 1937, A Star is Born featured notable actors. Frederick March, along with his wife Florence Eldridge, adopted two children, Penelope and Anthony. Adolf Menju, who attended Culver Military Academy and graduated from Cornell University with an engineering degree, also served as a captain in the Ambulance Corps during World War I. Moreover, Menju was voted Best Dressed Man in America nine times over the years. 
These actors brought depth to the film, enriching its narrative with their diverse experiences and talents. In 1937, Wade Boltler, a father of three sons, passed away while his sons were in military service. The personal sacrifices of Boltler's family mirrored the larger context of the time, highlighting the challenges faced during that period. Around the same era, Owen Moore, a figure in the film industry, was not only known for his contributions, but also for being the brother of Joe Moore and the uncle of Alice Moore. His familial connections extended to being the brother-in-law of Grace Cunard, creating a network within the entertainment community. Meanwhile, Andy Devine, recognized for his later role as Captain Andy Hawks, marked his stage debut in 1957 in Guy Lombardo's production of Showboat. The venue, a theater on Long Island, served as a notable starting point in Devine's stage career. These glimpses into the lives of Wade Boatler, Owen Moore, and Andy Devine provide a broader understanding of the interconnected relationships and diverse experiences within the entertainment industry during the 1930s. In 1937, A Star is Born brought a story of love and big dreams to the audience. One of the actors, Frederick March, lived in New Milford, Connecticut. Later on, his house became a home for important people like playwright Lillian Hellman and Henry Kissinger. On the other hand, Adolf Menju, another actor in the movie, got involved in the politics of that time. He testified before the House Committee on Un-American Activities, expressing his strong right-wing views. Even though March did a great job in the film, rumors about his left-leaning politics led to him being blacklisted in 1949. These behind-the-scenes events give us a peek into the challenging times when the movie came out, adding interesting layers to its legacy. Mae Robson, at the age of 21, gave birth to her second child, James Beryl Gore, with husband Charles Gore in Weddy Ean in 79. Tragically, young James passed away at the age of three on April 26, 1882. Edgar Kennedy faced a somber fate, passing away on November 8, 1948, merely 36 hours before a scheduled testimonial dinner organized in his honor. Hollywood had known since August 1948 that he battled throat cancer, a fact casting a shadow over the event. Owen Moore, recognized as the brother-in-law of Renee Doray, contributed to the movie's dynamics with this familial connection. These personal histories weave a tapestry of life and loss intersecting with the production of A Star is Born. The cast and crew carried these personal narratives, infusing the film with real human experiences. Edgar Kennedy appeared in three Oscar Best Picture nominee San Francisco, A Star is Born, and Anchors Oig. The tiki bar scene in the movie was a reflection of the South Seas style craze in Los Angeles, influenced by Duke Kanemaku's introduction of Hawaiian culture. Janet Gaynor, known for her roles in Ben Hur A Tale of the Christ, Seventh Heaven, Sunrise, and State Fair, had a significant presence in culturally significant films, 